I'm Lee Brown. This is crazy shit in real estate. And today we get to talk to somebody of a slightly more advanced age who found real estate and has lots to share about former life, current life, and just frankly, some good real estate knowledge. So Dave Armstrong is our guest today from Northwest Arkansas. You're going to love Arkansas, Dave, and this conversation. I'll see you on the other side. I can see you. See if that unmutes again. How about now? All right. Maybe you're unfrozen. I'm really oh my gosh. We're having all kinds of issues here. So oh, you want me? If we're going to have <laughs> obstacles, Monday is when they happen anyway. So I guess. Okay. So we, we'll just we'll move on. That's right. You know, I'm, I work in broadcasting. We had audio problems all the time. Well, that's just part of the game, right? And now that's we just it. have more technology, so we have more problems. Right. So tell me a little bit about where you are in Northwest Arkansas. So are you a Walmart guy? Are you kin to the to the family? Are you allowed to say, or are they like a mafia? Because I've always. I, I wish. I, I would love to be akin to the Walmart family, uh, I, but no, I'm not. Uh, I'm an outsider. I actually came to Northwest Arkansas to go to school at a little yeah. college called John Brown University in Salem Springs, Arkansas. That was a lifetime ago. Uh, they were the only school dumb enough to give me a tennis scholarship. So I, that's where I went. Oh. And uh, so I, I came to John Brown, played tennis for them. But the truth of the matter is they had a singing group called the Sound Generation. And they would go around to churches during spring break and sing at different churches. And they came to our church in Michigan when I was a junior in high school. And I'm telling you, Lee, they had two of the prettiest girls I'd ever seen in my life. And I was like, that's where I'm going to college. And then when I got there, I never saw those two girls. They, I, I think they were just actresses they just brought in. But, uh, but anyway. So, so you went there yeah. for tennis after enjoying the music because you saw pretty girls. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You know, it's always the girls that get you. So, I, muscles, so all we have in the mail every day is college recruiting information. I feel like I should follow up with some of those PR companies and and tell them the Arkansas Day version of yeah, exactly that's that's a great way of recruiting. <laughs> but I, so I came down here a long time ago, uh, moved away. My career took me all over, and uh, spent time in a lot of time in the state of Kansas uh, as a broadcaster, and then moved out to Colorado. Actually, it was the uh, TV announcer for the Colorado Rockies. And then we moved back down here, my wife and I, uh, we came down to Bella Vista, Arkansas, um, about six years ago. And so I came down and I was still a full time sports announcer and doing that. But the year prior to us moving here, I'd spent 210 nights in a hotel. So I was just going from one game to another, to another, to another, and traveling all over the country. And I was I was tired of it. You know, uh, it, it was harder to travel. Um, this was pre-COVID, but we're still having to take our shoes off in the airport. And there was just a lot of things there. And I was just tired of waking up in a Hampton Inn every day and not being home. And so we literally bought a lot in Bella Vista. We're going to build our dream home. And I'm standing on the street talking to our realtor, who is a great guy named Mo Holm here at Cry Like Realtors. And I said, Mo, what's real estate like around here? And he goes, oh my gosh, we're hopping. Northwest Arkansas, we have seven new families moving into Arkansas every day. And he said, I, real estate, I've been doing it for 20 years and it's never been better. And Walmart brings them in and Tyson Foods brings them in and J.B. Hunt. So we've got a lot of industry here in Northwest Arkansas, a lot of jobs, jobs are plentiful, plus it's beautiful. I mean, we've we've just got a wonderful place to live and play and work and all of that. And I said, huh, that's interesting. I said, you know, I've been thinking about getting uh, my real estate license. And he says, well, if you get it, we'll hire you. And uh -huh. I didn't know that if you if you're a warm body with a real estate license, almost any brokerage will take you on. Just, so I thought, well, gosh, I've got a ready made job. And so we were walking away. And my wife goes, when did you decide you were going to get into real estate? I said, just now. <laughs> and so I went online. I took the course. Uh, then I had to take the test, of course. And I was scared to death because I hadn't taken a test in 50 years. And all my kids were like, Hey, Dad, good luck on the test. And they go, oh, please don't fail it. You know, it looked bad. So I passed first time, passed. So I came down here to Cry Like and interviewed here. And I also interviewed 
every everywhere else too. I interviewed uh, and everybody was going to offer me a job. And I thought, well, this is crazy. Uh, so anyway, I did decide to uh, put my license with Crylike. And one of the main reasons was I knew just from getting into a new thing that I needed some instruction, right? I didn't want to just come in blind. All of a sudden, I don't know what I'm doing. So I asked Mo, my realtor, and he was the only person we knew in Bella Vista. I didn't know another soul. Uh, so I had to start from dead scratch. And I said, Mo, I'll come to cry like if you promise to mentor me. Aww. And he said, I will do that. I will do that. And I said, then I'm coming here. And he was a tremendous mentor. I learned so much from him. I would go into his office and we'd talk for an hour. And that's what I recommend to new agents. Don't think you can do this cold turkey and do it on your own. And I also got advice from another realtor who said, just expect to struggle in your first year. You're not going to hit the ground running and all of a sudden have 40 listings and have you know a bunch of sales. You're probably going to struggle. You might struggle for two years, but just hang in there. And I know you, I've heard you quote the statistics about over 80 percent quit after their first couple of years. It's yep. tough. But yeah. if you hang on, you stick to it. And I was still doing some sports announcing on the side. Um, not as much. I really cut back on my schedule. I was only doing maybe 50 games a year instead of 150. So I really cut back on that. And then as I started getting traction, I actually retired from sports announcing just last November. Uh, I did my last basketball game at the University of Kansas. And after doing games there for almost 40 years, uh, so I did my last basketball game there and I'm a full-time realtor and love it. I get to sleep in my own bed. And I'm having a blast. This is the this is the coolest thing. I love my new career. And frankly, now that Roy Williams has retired, the North Carolina Kansas rivalry over coaches seems to be yeah. moving into the rearview mirror. It's kind of sad. All these years we've poked at each yeah. other because Dean Smith. Yeah, well, it's, Williams, it started with Dean, who played at Kansas, and he played he played for uh, you know a guy here that uh, was absolutely a, a legend um, in Fall Gallon. Who was, was a long time coach? Here. I think doesn't Emporia have a monument to Dean Smith now that that's where he was born? I think they do. Yep, he was born there and then uh, went to Kansas, played for and Adolph Rupp went to Kansas, and you know it's it's there's a lot of history. So as you know, you're being from North Carolina, and North Carolina's got a lot of history. You know, there's the Blue Bloods. You know, Kansas, North Carolina, Kentucky. And, you know, there's such a connection with all those three schools and they all come back to Kansas, who was their first coach was Dr. Naismith, who invented the game. And he's the only losing coach they've ever had at Kansas. He had a losing record. I so how about that? that? Yeah, yeah. Will, there's a little trivia for you. For any of our listeners and viewers, I just want you all to notice that um, when Dave talked about Blue Bloods, he did not mention a certain four letter word that's in reference to a Yankee school in North Carolina that thinks they're Ivy League, but they're definitely not. So I'm just going to point out we're not saying their name because that's kind of like saying Voldemort can't do it. But anyway, yeah, so yeah, Dave, yeah. let's talk about that a little bit because you made a transition in real estate from being a, a part time realtor to being all in as you made a career transition there, frankly, for quality of life more than anything else. What yeah. was the hardest part for you transitioning from part-time to full-time? Was it the demands from your clients or the demands on yourself? Tell us a little bit about that space because one of the, I think one of the groups we don't talk to enough in real estate are those who really wish they were full-time, but they're panicked about it. So your insights might help somebody else make a good decision. Yeah. I, uh, well, the the first thing was just how do I get started? How, you know, where, where do I find clients, you know, especially moving to an area where I didn't know a soul. Um, and it wasn't like I could just go to my, and this would be an old term, but go to my Rolodex and, and just say, well, cause I didn't, I didn't know anybody here. So I had to go out and meet people. So I would say to the new people, go out and meet as many people as you possibly can. Now I'm lucky I'm a golfer. And Bella Vista is known for golf. We have five golf courses here. It's used to be a retirement community. It is no longer a retirement community because now we have over a hundred miles of mountain bike trails and really? we have all kinds of young. Oh, it's, it's fantastically. I mean, uh, and, and that's due to the wall, the Walton grandsons who are huge into cycling. So they have spent millions of dollars, millions of dollars on mountain bike trails and paved trails. We have a paved trail that goes all the way from Bella Vista down to Fayetteville. 
and uh, and you don't ever have to get on a road. It's just a paved trail. It goes about 40 miles. You, I've never done it coast to coast. Now, I, I will admit I've gotten an e-bike, so I cheat a little bit. I got a little power, a little support on my bike, uh, but I love it. Get on these trails and everything, but I digress. So it's get out and meet people, and that's what I did through golf. I just started getting involved in the biggest golf groups that were here in Bella Vista, started meeting people. Because I have a philosophy. I think most people want to do business with people they know and trust, right? If everything else is equal, you have to get out and meet people. So, and, and the big part of that is everything else being equal, right? So when you talk about that, uh, you have to be smart too. You have to know what you're talking about. You can't just be a good guy or a good gal and, you know, everybody likes you, but you don't know anything about what you're talking about. That's why I'm so amazed with you. I mean, you're not only likable and funny, but you're so daggum knowledgeable uh, about the industry. I've heard these podcasts and it doesn't matter who you have on, you know about it. And it's like, holy crap, how did you get that much knowledge? Uh, and I, I, I aspire to be like that to where you know everything. But I know my market now. And and I'm really and so know your market. So all things being equal, that means I've got to know as much as the next person about real estate. I need to know more than they know so that when people ask me on the street, how's the market? It depends. Right. I learned that from you. Good job. You are a gold star yeah, yeah. there. <laughs> right. So it depends. So but, you know, you've got your elevator speech. So when people ask, they really kind of really want to know more than anything. They want to know how does the market affect me? Yes. Right. It, whether, whether I'm buying or selling, how does it affect me? And so you've got to have a little 30 second, 60 second speech available. So go out and meet a bunch of people. The hardest transition for me, Lee, was just learning the lingo. Right. I mean, real estate has its own language. It has its own uh, verbiage that everybody you guys, we're all used to it now. We, mm -hmm. we talk about assessments and we talk about liabilities and we talk about this and that. And to the common person, you don't really know what we're talking about. And so when I would sit around in the office my first year, I came in every day and our broker wisely put me in what we call the bullpen. Yeah. So I was by the copy machine. I was right outside the broker's office. She kept her door open. So I'd listen to phone calls. I'd just eavesdrop on her having phone conversations. And I would start picking up the lingo, picking up the language, starting to understand about septic. You know, like I didn't know anything about septic before I came to Bella Vista. I was like, I was always on sewer. So now I got to learn about septic. I learned about septic. I'd hear two bro two uh, realtors talking at the copy machine about one of their transactions. And I was never afraid to go to other realtors and ask a ton of questions. I, and I, I don't know why. And, and this drives me nuts. Right. So when I was a sports announcer. In 1984, our little TV station in Wichita, Kansas, where I was a sports anchor, and I was doing the sports news every Monday, every Monday through Friday, six and ten. I'd be the guy giving you the highlights and you know doing all that, and that's really kind of what I wanted to do. But our station manager decided to get an RV and gut it and get a little production studio, and we travel all around the state of Kansas doing games. How fun. In fact, I did a game. I did a game. This is like beyond real estate, but I did a game at the Salina Bicentennial Center, Salina, Kansas, which is in the middle of the state. Uh, and guess who played in this game? Michael Jordan. It was the Pan American team from America, coached by Jack Hartman, who was then the coach at K State. And they were doing an exhibition game at the Bicentennial. So we televised it. And I asked Coach Hartman before the game, I said, and what, which one of these players really impresses you? And he goes, oh, this is Michael Jordan kid. Now, he was still in college. He goes, this is Michael Jordan kid. He's the most amazing player I've ever had. I said, is he better than Rolando Blackman, who was one of his star players? He goes, oh, my gosh, he's so much better than Rolando. He goes, wait till you see. So he plays in this game against NBA, uh, the NBA. Uh, they were then the Kansas City Kings. They moved out to Sacramento. But they were playing against NBA players. Jordan scored 46 points in this game, right? And so anyway, we were traveling around the state doing games like that. I was doing indoor soccer. I was doing KU, K-State uh, football and basketball. I had no idea what I was doing, right? I didn't, I didn't really want to be a play-by-play -play guy. It wasn't something. But then once I started doing it, I thought, 
this is fun. I really enjoy this. This is getting me out of the studio, get me out to the game. And so I started really liking it. And I thought, I got to get better because I'd listen to myself and record the games and I go, oh my God, am I horrible? So I said, I've got to get better. Well, Dick Enberg, and you'll remember these guys, Dick Enberg, Billy Packer, and Al McGuire, they were the three best basketball announcers of all time. I still think they were the best team. So anyway, they were coming They were coming to Kansas to do a Kansas-Kentucky basketball game for NBC. And I was, I was working at an NBC affiliate, so I called Dick Enberg's office, and I said, I understand Mr. Enberg's coming to Lawrence, Kansas. I'd like to come up and meet him and just pick his brain. He called me back, and he said, listen, I want you to come up Friday, spend the day with us, do all of this stuff. And so I said, yes, sir. So I went up on Friday. I spent the day with Billy Packer and Al McGuire and Dick Enberg, got to go to practice with them, picked Dick Enberg's brain. And what do you prepare for? How do you do? You know, why do you say, oh, my? And he said, well, I say, oh, my, because it's my way of saying, "Okay, don't say any more. Let the crowd take over. It's like at the end of a big play. It's my exclamation point. Oh, my. And I went, that's great. So I started trying to come up with my own oh my and holy cow was taken by Harry Carey and I had a friend who did San Antonio Spurs basketball and his was oh mama hold on to your pants so that was taken Um, but anyway on a Danny Manning alley-oop play at Kansas one time it just because I was searching for all kinds of different like oh that was swell or something like that and nothing worked and all of a sudden Manning went up for an alley-oop dunk and I went wow and that stuck. And I, as soon as I said it, I got chills and I went, OK, that's my oh, my. So that became sort of my catchphrase doing sports announcing. And where were we? I probably lost track. What was you your totally next question? went down a rabbit hole because we were I sure about did. I'm so sorry. From part time to full time. But you accidentally talked about the picking up of a mentor to add knowledge. And you got yes. to Dick Enberg and Billy Packer and Al McGuire because you asked And you just know as your mentor, I like because you asked, and I think there's a a huge message there for the people that are trying to figure out how to make real estate work. It's not like a mentor is going to find you and say, hey, come with me. You have to be one that finds somebody that you want to emulate because obviously you're picking the best of the best and ask them. And then you've gotten a yes every time. And I think that's one of the the challenges we have in today's society, we assume there's going to be a no instead of assuming there's going to be a yes. And so yes. when you talk about having Mo as your mentor and building the knowledge of the real estate market, did Al give you some guardrails and say, go do it this way? Or did you you know, pick up the new home community magazines and go about it that way? What was your pathway to gaining that knowledge? Because as we know, there's a lot of brokers that want agents to learn it as they go. But Mm -hmm. the side of that are the brokers and mentors that want you to learn before you get in front of the consumer. And so how did you pick up your knowledge and what was your structure? My structure was mostly, okay. broker was great. Right. And she she was fantastic in doing some coaching. Uh, I would volunteer anything I could do to help. Right. I I would ask uh, any realtor in our office, how can I help you? How can I help you? I would offer to show homes for them. I would do anything. Not not for any pay. I don't want any pay. I just want to learn how to do this. Hey, pause right? that. Let's land on that for one second before you okay. keep going, because in life right now, there is an entire generation that wants to be paid for every minute they spend doing things. But what yep. you're describing is that paying of dues. That's so right. we say that there was a payoff ultimately for being in that giving mindset where you were giving your time in return for the knowledge? No question. No question. I mean, I got more than I ever gave. Trust me. Uh, because, right? I mean, you always get more. And I'm still learning, Lee. I, this is, I'm just I completing my the business. I, I, you know, we all do. And, and I'm in it now five years and I've been, I've really done well. I mean, it's just been amazing. Um, you know, I'm just so happy with the results, but I really care about my clients. They become family to me. And I've made, I've made so many friends in Bella Vista. We, our social calendar is too full. In fact, my wife and I always say, 
Look, we got to we got to make two nights just for ourselves, right? Because the other five nights we can go out and do stuff with everybody else. Because we, you know, you get overpacked and over busy, and that's where we've been. But it's wonderful, and I've learned so much from every other realtor I've come in contact with. You know, I learned about escalation clauses when everything was going crazy. You know, in the market, and we had, uh, you know, somebody said somebody just wrote an offer on a listing I had on an escalation clause. First, I'd heard of it like three years ago, and I was like, "That's a cool idea." Uh, and so we started talking about that in the office, and we have office meetings uh, every two weeks. And it was vital for me to be here and to just soak up information, listen to other realtors talking about their issues, what problems they had, uh, going to open houses. Talking to people, you know, that's how I got really started was doing open houses, doing the hard work. You're right. Paying dues. Um, I paid dues as a sports announcer. And so I wasn't well, afraid to pay dues. Well, yeah, you don't start off announcing for the Rockies. No. You start off in no. an RV going to high school games yep. and Pan American games to build your skill set. Or as I like to say, you know, you're building muscle memory so that you will know what to say. And like when you land on your catchphrase. You have the muscle memory that says these are the instances where that yeah. needs to be said. And the same thing happens in real estate. And in fact, when you talk about those sales meetings every two weeks, it's it's so interesting now. When I got in the business 23 years ago, everybody had a sales meeting. They were all on Tuesdays. And so you knew that every Tuesday mm -hmm. in the market, all the realtors were in sales meetings. You fast forward to today into the era of Zooms and smartphones, and we have agents who no longer think they need a sales meeting because in their head, it is wasted time. But that's perspective, because what you're describing is when you're around other people, you're going to learn, you're going to grow. And as we look at the, the systemic changes that are happening in real estate, wouldn't everything be different if there was a universal desire to come together so that we could learn and give to each other and not just, ah, oh, I have to mentality? Because I think that's where sales meetings, the attendance goes away when you think it's no, there's no point to it, but there's always a point in gaining. Some knowledge. A absolutely. And I, I think we can all learn from each other. Sometimes it's a support group, right? I mean, because we all have crazy <laughs> clients and we all have stuff that happens and you're like, oh, now I've learned, I've been in it long enough. It used to stress me out when something would go wrong or whatever, and something goes wrong all the time. Right, and so you wonderful. learn with experience, right? You learn with experience that, you know, next, it's going to be fine. It'll work itself out. We'll get through this issue. Whatever this issue is, it'll it'll resolve itself or it won't. And if it doesn't, then we move on to the next. It's wonderful. Is there a class that you took on the yes. internet that's been good for you? I want to hear all about yes. it. Yes. Okay. So I am in the progress of taking your how to dominate during a recession class and Oh my gosh, it's just absolutely the best. It's really helpful to understand and to know what it was like during the other recession um, and to how to pr to proceed, uh, but also at the same time in the back of your mind, remembering that every recession is not the same. So you have to be prepared, but you have to be flexible. So understanding, educating during this downtime in our market, educate, 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 getting on top of that um, and being prepared. So, you know, take as many classes as you can, get involved with your um, with your association. Just really, a, you know, diving in has been I'm so excited to get it completed. But um, yeah, you it's a great class. Highly, well, highly I'm really glad that you're finding it helpful. And I love what you said, too, that every recession is different because whether the media wants to call it one or not, we know the economy is not feeling perfect right now. And when things go, <laughs> that's when we do more education for ourselves so we can give that education to our clients. And so thank you for those kind words. I can't wait to get the full review when you finish it. And by the way, friends, if you follow the link here, we might have a discount code to get you involved in that class as well. So you can join McKenzie and get some education in your yoga pants in the evenings yeah. while you fly and stir in the day. So thank you for that kind recommendation. I'm so glad you're enjoying the fast. Yeah, you're welcome. We love that. Or it won't. We we, we should probably all be looking at it that way <laughs> because there are instances where it doesn't cleanly work out. We don't tie a nice little bow on it. There are instances where the damage is so great that everybody does move on and and that's okay too because we can't yes. 
we can't be out of control and then expect every situation to have a controlled ending. That's that's kind of unrealistic, but that's also what they pay us for. The consumer pays yeah. us because nobody has any idea what's coming next. And so they need a professional to guide them because sometimes it'll work out and sometimes it won't. So now in your five years, as you've gotten mm-hmm. acclimated to a new market, made new friends, learned a new industry, like everything's new in your life, apparently, plus probably seeing yeah. your wife as a new experience after traveling nonstop. So y'all are absolutely getting to know each other again, which is probably kind <laughs> of exciting at this stage of life. So I'm curious, as you look at the next phase of your real estate life, and, and obviously you're not 25 anymore, you're 26 now. And so at, at 26, Thank you. do you look at real estate as a retirement side hustle or do you see this as a way to stay full time involved in something professional? Because I think there's a there's a real a reality now that retirement at 65 is not first of all, possible because of the economic climate. But second of all, the lifespan is so much longer now. You'd be bored for 20 years if you retired at 65. And so do you look at real estate as a retirement side hustle or a retirement focus as you move forward for a while? It's not a side hustle at all. It never has been. It's always been something I wanted to do full time. Uh, I love it. Um, I'm I'm still so new to it that I really, really do just, I'm excited. Uh, And my next phase is and this is something I haven't done and I don't don't kill me for this but something I should have done and I listened to your podcast and I'm going to do it in fact I've signed up for uh what's her name that does the videos Karen Carr Karen Carr okay so I I I heard I heard your commercial I I got a hold I I'm on I did the $27 discount that you offer Uh, I was like how I mean how how is that like twenty seven dollars? That's nothing to invest in yourself and invest in. Of course, I'm going to do that. So that's my next phase. I'm going to get into video. It's like my wife said, dude. If anybody should be doing video, you ought to be doing it. You were on camera for thirty years, you know, on ESPN. Yeah, it's why wouldn't you do video? So, but I always say this, Lee. I, I was on TV for a long time, and I, I have a face for radio. But somehow they stuck me on TV anyway, and I don't know. I don't know why, but whatever. Uh, so, so I'm going to do video. That's my next thing. I want to do video. Us, I, if they can make us all look at Dickie V for all these years, then we can have to look at Arkansas Dave too. There you go. There, you know, I know I look a little like Larry Bird. I get that a lot. So you know, <laughs> it drives me nuts because I'm like. Uh, I wonder if anybody's ever gone to Larry Bird and said, you, you never look, you know, look like Dave Armstrong, uh, but that probably never happened. Uh, but anyway, know, I, I mean, we don't know what Larry Legend really came from. I mean, it's possible. Yeah, exactly. it's been all Dave. yeah, maybe. So, you know, down here, hey, the way that things go, I would say this, that my next phase is I do want to do the video. I'm not I, I'm not a big social media guy. OK. Uh, It's partly my fault for, uh, and here's what I'd say. I think there's a lot of ways to be successful in real estate. I think social media is one of those ways. It's probably not great for me and, and for our community, right? For this community in particular, I get that most of my clients are older. We do have a lot of retirees. It's the number three place in America to retire. And so we do have a lot of people coming here to retire because it's, it's a beautiful, uh, it's low cost, uh, taxes are low, uh, home prices are low. So it's a very affordable retirement existence. So we do have a lot of that. And what I'm finding, though, is I think by doing the videos, I think people will find me through that. Uh, I'm also just really concentrating more on listings than buyers, um, which is fine. I'm making that transition. When I started, it was almost all buyers. And now I'm probably 80% listings and 20% buyers. I still like to do the buyers because I still like to go out and look at homes. I mean, that was one of the reasons I got into this. I just like looking at homes. So, you know, I'm going to have to give you a teachable moment here, Mr. I don't please do media. I know. You know, the fastest growing demographic on Facebook is 55 plus. Like that's Facebook. And you know what they're using for? Do you know this part? Mm. They're using it for dating. No dating. Grandkids are over on TikTok. The 55 okay. plus use it for dating. And if you think about oh. it, 
Mm-hmm. You know, cancer takes away somebody's spouse and they'd like to have somebody to eat supper with, which as I oh, look yeah. at the older people I know, when they become widowed, generally they miss having somebody to eat supper with. And yeah. they don't really want to use an app because that's foreign to them. And they're looking for people they knew in a former stage of life, somebody from high school, hometown, previous job. So it's being used as a dating app. And so I'm going to point this out, not because uh, you need it for that purpose, but if your demographic is there, then you think about it as the digital business card that it can be. So when they find you or they hear about Dave Armstrong and then they go online, they look for you on Facebook. Oh, that's the guy. Oh, he knows things about real estate, too. Oh, he looks like... Mm -hmm my demographic and maybe then he'll understand where I'm at in life. So there's also the the place that social media fulfills of credentialing. So it's not necessarily about being viral on TikTok or doing some stupid dance. It could just be, right. hey, I'm Arkansas Dave. Let me tell y'all why we retired to Bella Vista. Top three things, boom, boom, boom. And that becomes your social media message. And frankly, Mm. when you take Karen's class, that's what she's going to tell you to do. And if you do it, you'll be successful. But I just want you to change your mindset a little bit. You definitely still building the foundation the way that it's intended to be built because we're in a relationship business. But the social media can just start can uh, support you and be a, a really good pillar of strength to your story and to your message and let you scale that message, too, so that you can serve more clients that you want to spend time with. And that's that's the good part about real estate is we get to have these relationships you've described with people uh-huh. that we're doing life with in community anyway. And as a 55 plus who's already got a busy social calendar, somebody moves into your area, they had said, hey, this is top three. I want to live here and play golf too. And then yep. they might not even want to spend time with you, but you can connect them so that they can find their people. Yes. That's a huge benefit as they move there. Oh, yeah. That's great. That's all good. Okay. You, you've fired me up. I'm going to do this. Now you don't uh, have to because... use TikTok, though. You're excused from using TikTok and TikTok, okay. from Instagram, but you probably should use LinkedIn right. just because you okay. uh, have been in professional spaces a long time, but you can cross post between LinkedIn and Facebook and the audience okay. so won't be dramatically different but if you try to go on tiktok i i just but you know maybe it'll be big that one grandma is huge on tiktok because all the young people crave her grandmotherliness but you'd have to be grandpa arkansas right. day but i don't know if that's really the angle you're going for there no 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 uh you know and the thing is i i think i, I yeah thanks i i remember uh when i was in a sports announcing there were a lot of older sports announcers when we went from fax machines to, you know, uh, just different technology, computers and all that. And a lot of guys were just resisting. And I was like, I never want to be a dinosaur. I never want to be that person who says, I'm not doing that because I'm too old for that. You're never too old. You're never right. too old. I started this business when I was almost 65. Right. And so here I am closing in on 70, going strong, like you're never too old. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You know, it's. It's like uh, the, my fa- one of my favorite stories is Clint Eastwood playing golf with Toby Keith. And, you know, and Clint says just casually, Toby, tomorrow I'm going to turn 86 years old. And Toby goes, you're kidding me. Clint, he says, you're still in great shape. You're still playing golf. How do you do it? And Clint looked at him with that little and he goes, I never let the old man in. <gasps> I like so, so here's here's the thing. Toby Keith wrote a song, Never Let the Old Man In. You could Google it. It's a great song. Uh, and then Clint used it on the movie he was getting ready to shoot the next day. He used it at the end of that movie. So um, it's like, I think the movie is called The Mule. So they use that at the end of that movie. So I agree with you. Uh, I need to quit saying I'm not doing social media. You're right. Because I don't want to be a dinosaur. I want to be the young guy in the group. And I want to be the guy that's never letting the old man in. So you, you fired me up. I'm doing it. You don't have to be all the social media. You can be targeted, which is also yeah. the same thing, you know, from sports announcing. You don't have to be all things to all people, because if you're trying to use hockey analogies while you're calling Major League Baseball, you're missing right. the audience. And so you just speak to the audience you're in front of. And yep. you do as a when you're announcing baseball. That's a different speech pattern. It's a different tempo entirely than Totally. So it's just knowing your audience. And so you are you are forgiven from having to do all of them. Just pick and choose the <laughs> best ones for Dave. 
So of yes, course, we're rambling here, but my whole purpose of the podcast is to get people little insights into the things they never knew about real estate. So I'm really curious as to what story you brought with you today about something okay. that's happened in your real estate career so far that you never expected. Okay, well, I'm going to take you back to the beginning, to my first buyer uh, that I ever had. And I was so excited, right? You know, you get finally get a buyer. I got a client. You know, this is so fun. And this was before I had an assistant, before, you know, things were. And so I'm setting up all the showings, right? I don't even really know how to do that. And I'm calling showing time and I'm setting up all the things. And even just the lockbox itself, the super lockbox was freaking me out. Like, I want to make sure I can do this and not embarrass myself in front of my clients. So anyway, I get all that settled. I get in the car with my clients. This was pre-COVID, so we're still driving clients around in our car. And all of a sudden, this couple, they, as we're going to our first appointment, this guy says, well, listen, I want to tell you something. Um, I have the ability to sense forces in the atmosphere and to know whether this is going to be a fit for me um, from an atmospheric standpoint. And I'm like, okay, great. And so I'm like, my this is my first one. So I'm like, okay. So we go into this first house and it's okay. But I'm also now wondering, Lee, what's he thinking about me if he's reading the atmosphere? Like, is he reading my thought bubbles? Uh, so I got to be careful <laughs> what I'm thinking. So we go into the first one goes, okay. We go into the next one, right? And we go, we just walk in the door and we're not in more than three steps. And he turned white and he says, I got to get out of here. Something has been killed in this house. Something has been killed. There's been murder in this house. And he runs out the door and he runs to my car. And I'm like, so again, new, I'm like, well, on the showing instructions, it said I have to turn off all the lights and leave my business card. So I ran in and I started flipping off all the lights in the house. I go downstairs and the guy was a taxidermist. So he that's where he sensed this killing in the house. This guy was killing animals and stuffing them. And so now we're in the car. Right. And now, I, fortunately, I had serious satellite radio. And we're listening to spa radio for 15 minutes while he's taking deep breaths because this got to decompose from all this. Right? So decompose. that was my first experience. Decompose from it. Dave yeah. really had to decompose from it. Oh, oh. yeah, really. Oh. I think that was misintended. Misintended. Okay. All right. Whatever he had anyway, to do. Listen to spa radio. <laughs> really? So spa radio really calmed us down. All of it. We were sitting out there doing breathing exercises and we end, ended up, he bought a house, they bought a house and they're still living here in Bella Vista. They're wonderful people. And he's really big into mountain biking and just loves it here. Loves it here. So. So did you ask? There's more to what? that story, but there's more to that story, but my wife doesn't want me to tell it. So well, I I, I'm, know what he thought about you, though. Did you ever ask him what kind of aura? Yeah, you I did. About? After we got to know each other better and through the process and actually went out to dinner a few times and saw them socially a few times. And I said, all right. So, dude, I got to ask you. I mean, you have this sense. I said, so what kind of vibe are you picking up for me? Because, I, you know, maybe be good for me to know this. He goes, you've got a great aura about you. And I went, hmm. <laughs> okay, good. Because I was like, oh, is, this he, is, is he reading the fact that I'm thinking this is different? This is strange. But I think he really did have some ability to do something because he didn't go in that house. He didn't know that this guy was a taxidermist. He didn't know that there was actually murder going on in that house. It was murder of animals, but it was murder. So anyway, that's my crazy story in real estate. Well, I guess it does give you a good feeling, though, as a as a human, right? We always yeah. wonder what other people think about us. Yeah. We're all we, obsessed. We wonder with, too much about that, don't you think? You want to please people. And frankly, they're yeah. seldom thinking about us or thinking about themselves. But right. when you have somebody who can lean into their own intuition, whatever it looks like, it's got to be a little bit of a pat on the back that you did not come across as a total jack leg. You came across as a decent human. <laughs> right. And let me say what I think about you. OK, I think you're superwoman. I honestly do. I, I got the privilege of hearing you at our cry like convention in Destin, Florida in October. You were absolutely phenomenal. You uh, to use a baseball term, you hit it out of the park. You spoke for two hours, which is hard to do. And I talked to you about that afterward. I've done some public speaking 
speaking to a group for more than 45 minutes is tough to hold their attention. And you did it. You and, and you didn't have a single note in front of you. You just talked and your knowledge and your humor and the way you did it. I was just so amazed. And then I got to go to the uh, top club luncheon that you you spoke at. You spoke for another hour, just ad lib, just doing it. And I was just so amazed. I'm amazed by you, all the balls that you have in the air and how you keep them up and how you have such a great family life and great mom, great wife, great career and such an inspiration to all of us out here. So whatever, however you're doing it, whatever secret sauce you're putting on your chicken, just keep doing it because, man, you got it going. You got it going. Well, the secret sauce is the blood of Jesus, of course. And so then you know that your future is secure. That takes a lot Mm. of pressure off. But then as far as the chickens, I have to keep them alive because I make a nine egg pound cake. And so without the chickens, I ain't making no pound cake. But it all goes back (laughs) to the passion, right? So if I asked you to talk for two hours about baseball, I bet you could do it. If I asked you to talk for two hours about basketball, I bet you could do it. My passion is for entrepreneurs and for real estate in specific and what it does for people's lives. And frankly, I wish the rest of the world knew where their passions were. Too many people land in something and they find out they're fine at it. But being yeah. fine at something is not the same thing as having passion. And when you find that, life just gets more fulfilling. And there's something to be said about being able to take what you are fulfilled by and fill other people up. So I'm just I'm just really blessed and lucky, Dave, that I've landed in the profession I needed to be in with the right skill set to to help other people, which is why we have the podcast. So we can talk to other people and introduce yeah. some other like minded souls. Well, I've been blessed to have two great, great careers. You know, I had a blast being a sports announcer. As my good late friend Vince Scully used to say, I'm an extraordinary I'm a, I'm I'm an ordinary guy who's had a chance to live an extraordinary life. And that's the way I look at myself. I'm a very ordinary guy who had a chance to lead an extraordinary life, met all kinds of, you name the athlete over the last 40 years, I probably met him, maybe even called a game they were in, had a blast doing that. Now I get to live this new life as a realtor in Northwest Arkansas, loving that, loving the passion that people like you have for the industry, uh, and I think we just got to keep that moving forward. All of us like minded people that are, you know, motivated by people like you. We need to keep that going and keep supporting each other and knowing that, hey, it's not all all roses. You're not going to wake up every day going, oh, my God, this is so fun because some days aren't fun. But you know what? I wake up every day and I literally say to my wife every morning, this is another great day. And I start my day with that mindset, right? You got to start in your head saying, this is going to be a great day. And if you start with that mindset, you can make it that. Well, it's hard to undo negative feelings, but you can easily fight them off with a gratefulness mindset. So I love that you're wrapping our episode up there. So Dave, if somebody wants to connect with you in your Arkansas realtor life, how can they find you? Okay, I don't have Instagram yet, but I'm going to get that. Okay. You don't know Instagram. You're on Facebook. Remember your Facebook and LinkedIn. That's your sweet spot. Um, yeah, and you that's it. Back okay. here and gets you on there. Right. Yep. And I'm going to get on YouTube. Uh, but right now, you can look up my website. It's DaveSellsBellaVista.com. Uh, you can email me at Dave.Armstrong at CLHomes.com. Uh, I won't give out my phone number, but you can if you want to. It's fine because um, nobody's going to be driving around in their car writing that down anyway. It but, should be. Yeah, I tell you what, I, thank you, Lee. Thank you for everything you do for all of us, um, you know, for having the passion that you have for this wonderful business, this industry that we're in. We provide such a great service to people. Uh, we really, really do. And it's all about us helping people. And that's really my passion at this point is, you know, all the accolades and the number one and Bella Vista and blah, 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 that doesn't matter. What matters to me is helping that next individual either buy or sell their home and to get them through the process and make it stress-free for them. I tell all my friends, I don't call them clients. I tell all my friends, listen, I do this for a living. I do it every day. We're good at it. Me and my partners here at Cry Like, we'll take good care of you. So you just sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride because we're going to make it fun for you.
And then we'll give a shout out to Harold, Lisa, and Dick at Cry Light for bringing me in. Yes. So I could meet oh. you. And we know that what they've done in the business has been nothing short of extraordinary and what they've been able to provide to elevate agents and create an environment where Mo can be a great realtor who brings in Dave and then helps lift you up along the way because this is never a one man show. This is an all of us together business. And that's the best thing about it. And Mo is enjoying retirement now. He passed the torch to me. And so that's been wonderful. Um, and he's enjoying his life now, fishing and doing whatever he wants to do. Uh, and I will say this, if you're out there and you have not heard Lee Brown in person, I don't care. You got to look up your website, figure out where you're going to be next and go see you. And if you are a broker and you want to bring somebody dynamic in, you get Lee Brown to be your speaker. You will not regret it. She, you're you're fantastic. You're fantastic. Man, well, thank you. And I, I guess I'll have to put the check in the mail so that. No, uh, we're good. free endorsement. <laughs> free endorsement. <laughs> thank you so much for the kind words. Thank you. thank you for coming on the show. And of course, friends, all of Dave's contact information is in the show notes for this episode. So you can connect with him by phone, email, website, or social media. And please do connect so that the like-minded souls that are doing real estate together can continue to help consumers going forward. Dave, I'm so grateful for you and look forward to seeing you, you again sometime. Yeah. And if we ever do this again, I'll try to make sure we have the internet working at Cry Like. I mean, you know, we told Harold and Lisa good things about them, and we told said nothing <laughs> about Dick too, and so it looks like they'll fix the internet, no problem. <laughs> we'll, we'll 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 figure it out. All right, friends. For more episodes, click on the subscribe button. Say something nice about Dave down here in the comments, and especially if you're cry light, give a shout out to Harold, Lisa, and Dick. Most importantly, come join us back over here for the next conversation next time. We'll see you. So if you found value in this episode, please like and subscribe to this channel, turn on the bell and catch another amazing episode by clicking above. Crazy Shit in Real Estate is also available on all of your normal podcast apps. So if that's where you like to hang out, go find me, click subscribe. And most importantly, leave me a review that says you think I'm awesome, my guests are awesome, or this content is just exactly what you were looking for. And then by the way, if there's something you need, you want to learn about something, you can comment below anytime. You can also send me a direct message if you need to remain anonymous, no judgment. But anyway, I'll only judge if you forget to subscribe and click. I'll see you next time.